Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the talk. Um, I am Ji Chao Li uh, from Stony Brook. I'm going to talk about the uh, importance of evaluating storage systems dollar cost. This is cooperative work with uh, Amman Preet Milker and Professor Rezalok from Stony Brook University. Please feel free to discuss me uh, in this regarding during the QA session. You know, with the uh, advent of non memory, for example, the uh, PCM, the SSD, there's a trend industry to come with hybrid drive to achieve better trade-off among performance, capacity, and initial purchase cost. There are two modes in hybrid drive. One mode is tiering, where the non volatile memory is used as primary storage, and there is a caching mode, where the uh, non volatile memory is used to st store data copy. Examples of those hybrids include the Apple Fusion Drive, the Western Digital Sony, uh, Hybrid Drive, uh, Sony State Drive, and the Dell Companion um, Hybrid Flash, and actually many others. Um, you know, performance alone is not enough to evaluate storage systems. The associated cost, especially long-term cost, often matters. However, there are not enough uh, total cost of ownership studies when it says for a system that has SSD deployed. So what's our work? We actually build a cost model to justify the performance gain, and we build and evaluate two empirical systems, supporting both tiering and caching to illustrate several interesting observations. So talking about the cost model, our cost model contains the upfront purchase cost and the total cost of ownership. For upfront purchase cost, this is based on the price per capacity. For total cost of ownership, that contains the energy and power cost, the endurance cost or device replacement cost, and service and space cost. For energy and power cost, we actually look up those numbers through local electricity authority. Okay, not everybody aware that the power authority charges you not only based on your energy usage, but also based on your power usage if it's for commercial use. In terms of the uh, endurance cost or device replacement cost, we actually, it's actually, actually calculated as the endurance reduction of that device multiplied by the cost of that device. We use the fixed amount of service and space cost to start with, the, to start with this uh, cost study. We also scale the total cost of ownership to predict long-term cost of storage systems. Okay, now let's now take a look at the energy and power cost. See, we have a table from the Long Island Power Authority, May 2013. The price for energy is based on per kilowatt hour. The price for power is based on per kilowatt, okay? And we can see actually, just roughly see from this table that actually, <laughs> We are charged not only based on the energy, but also based on the power. And the prices for both energy and power are actually based on two things. One thing is that power usage, the power consumption, okay? Another thing is either your power energy is used during off-peak time or peak time or intermediate time. And, you know, in our environment, our device setup, environmental setup is not that large. Therefore, we focus on this region this price region, and we believe that if, say, the initial setup becomes much larger, there's a possibility to go across other, re other price regions, okay? Another thing worth mentioning is that the long end and power authority is now <laughs> replaced by PSE and G. It's just like the fact that storage systems was changing and evolving. Now, for the device endurance model, um, you know, for the SSD, we're tracking the amounts of rise. The endurance of the SSD is calculated as one minus the amounts of rise divided by the limited SSD rise. Uh, we're converting the rise to the rise effects based on certain uh, ratio. Um, for the HDD, we're also counting the uh, we're counting the start stop cycles. The endurance of HDD is calculated as one minus the number of start stop cycles divided by the limited number of cycles. Remember that for the SSD, we're actually, currently we're not counting the internal SSD garbage collection, um, red time amplification, and also reserve space, those kind of factors. For the HDD, we're not counting other factors like the vibration, like access, other access patterns. So we talk about the, 
endurance model for SSD and HDD, and we want to emphasize that the uh, endurance of that device actually depends heavily on the history usage of the device, right? So uh, we're actually using delta endurance to reflect the endurance reduction of that device for specific workload, okay? And we're using EU as the endurance unit. Uh, EU is based on one million. Basically, you multiply the endurance we previously discussed by one million, and then you got a, a, a range from zero to one million. Zero means a de a device, and one million means a new device. All right, we talk about the cost model. Let's now briefly talk about the uh, architecture of our case uh, studies. So for the tiering architecture, you know, application IOs go from the user level to the uh, kernel level, which has been captured by the device mapper framework. There are many existing targets there, linear is one of them, which linear maps from a virtual layer to the uh, physical layer without any data management. Green DM is the one we came up with. According to the mapping table of Green DM, those IOs are redirected to the SSD and HDD based on hotness and coldness of the, IO, of the data. We promote hot IO from the HDD to the SSD and cold IO from the SSD to the uh, HDD. We also spin down the HDD when it's idle for a certain amount of time. For the caching architecture, it's actually very similar to what we discussed earlier, except two things. One thing is that uh, now it's a cache entry instead of a uh, uh, mapping table, and it only maps from a cache device to a physical device. And the SSD here is used to stay, uh, store data copy instead of used as primary storage. Now, for the tiering data management, you know, we divided those virtual block address into virtual extent. Extent is a chunk of data, the size of which is fixed once configured. We did the same thing to the logical block address. Some of them belong to the SSD, some of them belong to the HDD physically. Now we have an in-memory uh, data structure called mapping table to maps from a virtual extent to a one uh, physical extent. We promote a uh, hot extent from the SSD to S uh, SSD when the access of that extent goes beyond a certain threshold. We demote code IO, code the extent from the SSD to the HDD when there's not free space in the SSD. For the motion to be always successful, we need to reserve a very small amount of extra extent for that to happen. Now, in terms of the caching data management, it's also very similar to what we have seen earlier, except two things. One thing is that the cache entry table in this cache, uh, caching architecture only maps from the cache device to the primary device. It's a, a lightweight mapping, while for the tiering, it maps from the whole virtual block address to the whole physical uh, block, uh, block address, therefore the mapping size can grow largely when the system uh, scales. Another thing different is that the write policy kicks in when there's write heat in the, in the SSD uh, cache. Our writeback is actually asynchronous. Those IOs are returned before writebacks are performed. And we queue writeback IO request and schedule kernel uh, thread to perform writebacks. Okay, we'll talk about the uh, system architecture briefly. Now let's switch the gear from system architecture to evaluation. So for experimental setup, um, we did experiments on two the Nervo Think Center. Each one has called two uh, CPU and four gigabyte RAM. Each one has one Intel, 300 gigabyte SSD, and one Seagate, two gigabyte HDD. At time of purchase, the SSD cost us $529, and the HDD cost us $200. We used WhatsApp for ES for energy and power measurement. We used several business to make the uh, evaluation more meaningful. My linear is actually a ver another version of linear, which linear, uh, linearly maps from the virtual layer to the physical layer without any da additional data management. We just plug in some statistical uh, code to, for better analysis, actually. We also have SSD only drive and HD only drive as the baseline. We have various system parameters, you know, for uh, analysis purpose. PT means uh, profession, uh, profession and pro, uh, promotion threshold, which basically means how many times you want extent being accessed before it's promoted or perfetched. MCML means maximum concurrent migration limit. ES means the extent size. Okay, uh, we have web search trace replay. This is block trace from the UMS trace repository. Drive size is 32 gigabyte to meet uh, Storage requirement, average resize is 16 kilobyte, average resize is 8 kilobyte. This is a re-intensive workload. So let's focus on the tiering cost result first before we look into a more complete tiering versus caching in more dimensions. So we have two figures here. 
one cost figure with time factor one, another cost figure with time factor 100,000. Uh, time factor basically means we assume running the same amount of workload this number of times, okay? Time factor one is a short-term cost. Time factor 100,000 is translated to 2.1 years on average for all the conditions. Now we see those two figures, but what can we observe? So for SSD only drive, we can see that it has large purchase cost and small total cost of ownership. Remember, when I say large and small, I basically mean relatively large and relatively small. See, for, for these results, SSD is uh, expensive to purchase uh, in, the long term, in long term, since it's not like doing data, mig data migrations and data management, it doesn't like incur too much too many uh, SSD accesses. What will happen to the SSD only drive? It has more purchase cost and more total cost of ownership. Easy to explain, right? Now, what will happen to the hybrids? Hybrids has medium purchase cost and large total cost of ownership because you know it incurs it has it has to do data migrations for those uh, data hot, hot, uh, hot and cold data management. And we can easily see that Green DM actually costs more than that of Magnier, the very naive tiering system. When we take a look at different system parameters, we can also see that when the promotion threshold is larger, the total cost of ownership is smaller. And the reason for that is that when the promotion threshold is larger, uh, it actually causes less SSD accesses, which then causes less SSD replacements, replacement cost. All right, let's now take a look at the uh, more complete tiering versus caching, okay? This is a read intensive workload. We have three figures here, one throughput figure, one short-term cost figure, one long-term cost figure. When we take a look at the throughput, we can see that actually tiering and caching achieve similar throughput. Caching may achieve slightly better throughputs than that of tiering if, say, the SSD in the tiering system contains cold data initially. Well, when we take a look at the short-term cost, uh -huh, we see that the, these two systems achieve similar short-term cost. And, you know, those two systems are actually similar, and the initial setup of those two systems is not that large, so therefore the difference is not that significant is in this case. And we do believe that if, say, the system scales much larger, the difference between those two systems, systems will be more significant. What will happen if we take a look, if we take a look at the long-term cost? We can see that in the long term, tiering incurs larger total cost of ownership, and the reason is due to the aggregated primary SSD IOs in the tiering system. And I want you to remember that for this workload, tiering incurs larger total cost of ownership. Okay, we also have the FIU online trace replay. This is block trace from the FIU trace repository. The drive size is configured to be eight uh, gigabyte to meet the storage requirement. Average read size is eight kilobyte. Average write size is four kilobyte. This is a write intensive workload. Still, let's focus on tiering cost result before we look into the more complete results. Still, we have two figures here. One cost figure with short term, one short term cost figure, one long term cost figure. The, for this long-term cost figure, it's translated to 3.3 years on average for all the, and all the conditions. Now, what can be observed? For the SSD-only drive, it has large purchase cost and large total cost of ownership. Because now this is right intensive workload, it contributes more to the SSD accesses, which is then contribute more to the SSD replacement cost. Okay, now for the SSD-only drive, it has small purchase cost and small total cost of ownership. For the hybrids, still, they have medium purchase cost and large total cost of ownership. We can also say that actually Green DM costs more than that of Mininear, okay? And if we say, if when we take a look at different um, configuration, uh, system configuration parameters, in this case, extend size, we can see that uh, smaller extent size actually leads to smaller total cost of ownership because smaller extent size actually causes less SSD accesses. Okay, what will happen to the full completion between tiering versus caching? Remember, this is a right intensive workload. Still, we have, we presented three figures here. One throughput figure, one short-term cost figure, one long-term cost figure. In terms of throughput, we can see that tiering actually achieves higher throughputs. The reason is due to the negative effect of the, uh, in the caching system, okay? 
And when we take a look at short-term cost, we can see that, uh -huh, still, they achieve similar short-term cost due to the affirmation reason. And in terms of long-term cost, caching in this case, incurs not just to the cost of ownership because of the uh, uh, right back IOs in the caching system here. And I want you to remember that for this workload, caching actually incurs larger total cost of ownership. Summarizing the results we have discussed so far, uh, that explains why we believe that we should really evaluate storage systems across performance, long-term cost, and workloads. Now, to summarize obse those observed trends, first of all, you know, parameters really matter for total cost of ownership. For really intensive web search, a larger promotion threshold actually leads to a smaller total cost of ownership. For write intensive online uh, workload, smaller extent size actually uh, leads to smaller total cost of ownership. For the SSD only drive, it has the least initial and long term cost, but it has the lowest performance. That may explain why storage system practitioners are looking into other opportunities. How about SSD only drive? Yes, it has the highest performance, but uh, it also has the highest initial cost and various long-term costs depending on the workload. Uh -huh. What will happen to the hybrids, both tiering and caching? You know, they have medium initial, initial purchase cost, various long-term costs depending on the workload and medium performance. Hybrids also achieve, uh, incurs more cost than the naive nonlinear, but also achieves higher performance. Okay, that may be something interesting to look into. For in terms of versatility effects, uh, we can easily say that um, different system parameters really lead to various long-term cost, and it will be a very interesting topic to explore how to adapt those system parameters to workloads, different workloads, to achieve certain service le uh, level agreement across performance, cost, maybe energy, power, those kind of dimensions. Now, you know, we have to admit that our cost model is not perfect. Our cost model did not include several factors. For example, the computer hardware cost, air conditioning cost, labor power cost, financing cost with different interest rates, you know, those conditions we have not yet uh, considered in our current cost model. And we also simplified several conditions in our case, say a real data center hardware may be more complex, right? A real data center workloads may be more complex, right? And our endurance model is actually cost-grained in the sense as I uh, explained earlier. And we believe that if somehow the internal information from the SSD can be somehow passed to up to the software layer that can help build a more accurate endurance model. And we have yet to uh, support generally for transaction purpose. Now in terms of related work, we are no simulation. We discuss the SSD endurance. We consider the total cost of ownership when the system has SSD deployed. All right, to conclude, you know, we really developed a cost model to justify performance gain uh, of cost model contains the upfront purchase cost and the total cost of ownership. We scale the total cost of ownership to predict the lifetime cost of the storage system. We, varied, uh, we evaluated, across, evaluated across workloads, several workloads. We also build um, empirical systems supporting both tiering and caching to help us with the evaluation. And above all, it's really our hope that our work could encourage more research into the long-term cost models of storage systems. And it's not only for the hybrids. We wish for all future storage systems. With all that, I think that's pretty much it from my side. Uh, I'm ready to take other questions. Hi, Michael Condit, NetApp. Uh, so the purpose of a cost model is usually not just to have it, but to use it to lower costs. <coughs> so the first thing we need to ask about your cost model is it's the cost of what? It's the cost of having a certain number of gigabytes, right? The total lifetime cost of having a certain capacity? 
So currently, it's more for the storage system. We consider the um, capacity of the device, yes. And the replacement cost, yes. And the energy and power consumption cost of the whole setup. But all of those have to do with capacity and not with performance. Um, what, what is it? So you're showing the cost of having a hybrid system. But if, if you show me that model and I say, oh, I want to lower my cost, I'm going to immediately throw away the SSDs and have a lower cost. But what that doesn't take into account is that I have certain IOPS requirements. I have certain latency requirements. Yeah. So have you considered uh, a, having a model of cost per, uh, per IOPS or the cost of achieving a certain average latency? That's is definitely a next question to explore. Okay. Shasoma from QCRI again. Uh, again, a very interesting work. And uh, I'm just curious, so you assess the, um, the cost for the SSDs, for example, by looking at the total ride cycles and how long it can last under a certain workload, right? Mm -hmm. So in data centers, is it current practice that each component like CPUs or memory and the SSD and hard disk can be individually, you know, retired and the swapped, does, do they have any dependency on each other? I'm not sure either they have dependencies or not, but um, it can be wear out for the other components, for the CPU, for the RAM, for network devices, they can wear out in some degree of that, right? But it's a challenging task to explore. Um, that's something we also admit that we have not yet looked into, but it will be very interesting to look into as well. So that's why, you know, we're emphasizing that we really wish for more cost models, okay, especially the long-term cost that, con that contains everything, more contains as much as, contains as much as possible for a better, you know, illustration and evaluation. Any other questions? I had a question. So again, kind of following up on the first question, the intent, especially if it is for performance, is to, in some cases, understand the overall cost of your you know, cluster or data center. And I'm wondering if you factor in, for example, the cost of networking, uh, how will that, w will that kind of lead to a different set of implications or do you think that that is kind of an orthogonal issue? Do you have any sense of how, how the two relate? Because in many cases, you don't just put an SSD together to form a, you know, a disk system. You, you have many such units running in in a networked manner? Uh, the, only speaking, there's something we haven't yet looked into as well. Um, so I couldn't give you a very like concrete answers, but that definitely could be a future work, right? All right, all right. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.